Hi, this is Amr Abdugawada, and in this lecture we're going to discuss genoverum or bow leg. So what are the objectives for this lecture? We'd like to list the causes of the genoverum in children, and then we'd like to differentiate between physiologic and pathologic genoverum, and then we're going to outline the management of children pre presenting with genoverum. A good source that you can use is this book, Pediatric Orthopedic, a handbook for primary care physician written by myself and Dr. Naga. Before we start, let's first discuss what does it mean varus and valgus deformity. So varus deformity, it is the deformity in which the distal part points medial. It means points toward the midline. Let's show that on this graph here. So this is cubitus varus. This is the elbow. Elbow is the cubitus. Varus means the distal part, which is the forearm in this condition, is pointing medially or towards the midline. Genoverum, also the same. So genoverum, this is a genoverum. What does this mean? It means that the distal part uh, of the knee, which is the lower leg, is pointing towards the midline. In the other word, vulgus deformity is the deformity in which the distal part points laterally. So let's just show that on this graph. So this is the elbow, the cubitus. So this is a cubitus vulgus. Why? Because the forearm here points away from the midline. This is a genovulgum. Why? Because the lower leg here points away from the midline. What we're going to discuss in this lecture is just genoverum deformity. Genoverum deformity is the deformity in which the lower leg is pointing towards the midline. This is usually referred to as bow legged. So what are the causes of genoverum in children? First is the physiologic and the normal development of the children uh, that they have a genoverum up to the age of two years. We're going to see that in detail. Uh, developmental diseases like the Blount disease or what's known as tibia vera. And there are two types of Blount disease, infantile tibia vera and adolescent tibia vera. And they will have a special lecture for uh, Blount disease. Uh, metabolic uh, conditions like rickets can cause genoverum. If you have an injury to the growth plate, uh, what we call Sulter Harris injury, as we said before in the lecture for the uh, pediatric orthopedic fractures, um, uh, this also can result in genoverum. Infection of the growth plate can lead to genoverum. Some dysplasia is associated with genoverum, like achondroplasia, and other conditions like tibial hemimelia and osteogenesis perfecta. Also, these can result in genoverum. So let's speak about normal knee alignment. Uh, so um, the children have various deformity until the age of two years. So if you see a child about one and a half year old and you look closely to his knee, you will find that he has some various deformity. Uh, and then this changes into vulgus deformity that reaches the maximum around the age of three to four year old. So if you look um, to a child around the three uh, or four year old um, age, you will see uh, that uh, he or she has vulgus deformity of the knee. And this vulgus deformity start uh, gradually to straighten up till it reaches the normal adult alignment which is about seven degree of vulgus around the age of eight years old so before the age of two uh, you have various deformity this uh, straighten up and then go into vulgus which is maximum maximum around the age of three to four years old and by the eight to, by the age of eight years old you have the uh, adult uh, alignment which is a mild degree of vulgus after discussion of the normal knee alignment, let's see how can we assist the various deformity of the patient. So the first thing that we can use is the intercondylar distance. It means the distance between two medial femoral condyle, which is this area here and this area here. So this distance, it increases in cases of genoverum. And if this distance is more than a hand breadth, more than like six centimeter, that's indicating of a genoverum deformity. So this is uh, here, this is the test done here. This is the intercondylar distance, which which is the distance between the two medial femoral condyle, and if it's more than a hand breadth, that's an indication of a genoverum, as we can see in this kid. The other thing that you can use is the uh, clinical thigh leg angle. It means that you measure the angle between the thigh and the leg. So what are the indications to obtain a radiograph uh, or orthopedic referral for cases of genoverum? As we said, uh, the normal alignment of children up to the age of two years is genoverum or bow legged. So not, not every child presenting with genoverum needed um, uh, to be uh, referred to an orthopedic surgeon or uh, to obtain a radiographs. So the indications for plain radiographs or orthopedic referrals are um, if there is a persistence of the genoverum after the age of two years or if the genoverum is getting is getting worse after the age of one year. Uh, unilateral cases are not physiologic um, genoverum, and these should be referred, or you should get an x-ray to see what is going on with the joint. 
also severe genoverum deaths need referral. By severe, we mean if the intercondylar distance is more than six centimeter or the angle between the thigh and the leg, um, as we showed before, is more than 20 degrees. If there is associated deformities of the other joints, that, that's not physiologic genoverum, so it needs referral. Uh, or if you're suspecting a general medical conditions like rickets or renal osteodystrophy. So these are some clinical pictures for a patient presenting with genoverums. Uh, this is a, a three-year-old uh, obese uh, girl um, uh, presenting with genoverum. This is a picture for Blount disease. Uh, as we said, we're going to have a separate lecture for Blount. Uh, this is a 12-year-old boy, uh, uh, also obese, presenting with uh, unilateral genoverum on his left side. Uh, this is an actually adolescent Blount disease. Uh, we're going to discuss that in the Blount lecture. Uh, this is a three-year-old girl um, with dysplasia uh, presenting with bilateral uh, genoverum. Uh, all these are different uh, patients with uh, presenting with the genoverum due to uh, different uh, etiologies. So what is the orthopedic management uh, for uh, genoverum? Um, it can uh, go uh, for observation if you think that this is a physiologic uh, case of genoverum and you expect that this child will uh, improve with time, so you can observe him for a while. However, uh, you should keep in mind that by the age of three to four years, uh, children should be in the vulgus side uh, of the knee alignment and sh they should not have varus. So if they don't improve by that age, uh, that indicates that they may be needing surgeries. Uh, bracing sometimes work in early cases, especially in the cases of Blount disease, you can try bracing. However, again, if the uh, child does not improve after six months of bracing, uh, that indicates that he may need surgeries. Uh, surgeries for genoverum, it's mainly two things. It's either guided growth or osteotomies, and we're going to discuss that in the next slides. So the concept of guided growth or hemiphysiodesis, this is a new concept in orthopedic. So it depends on guiding the growth of the growth plate so it can correct the deformity. So this is a patient of uh, genoverum, if you see here, uh, her tibia are pointing towards the midline, which is the definition of the varus deformity. She has a bow-legged genoverum, uh, and this is mainly coming here from the uh, distal femur part. Uh, so what we do is we, if we stop the growth of this part, allow this part only to grow, this will push the leg outside. So if you stop the growth here uh, uh, by putting a small plate or by putting a stables and allow the patient to grow from this side only, uh, this will push the leg outward and can correct the deformity gradually. This is called guided growth or hemiphysiodesis. Hemi because we stop the growth of only one part of the growth plate. So this is the patient. Uh, this is the picture for this patient. Um, uh, six months after doing the surgery here, so we put a small plate here to stop the growth and allow her to grow from this side. That's what we did here. This plate is preventing the growth of this part of the growth plate, allowing her to grow from this side. And if you see, when you grow from this side only, this will push your leg out and correct the deformity. So she is in a much better alignment now um, so after six months from now when she's fully corrected we go ahead and we remove these plates so that the patient can grow normally after that this is another example of hemiphysiodesis this is one of my patient uh, she has genoverum coming from the proximal tibia so what we did is we stopped the growth of the outer part allowing uh, the inner part to grow and when the inner part uh, grows uh, only they push uh, the leg outward and correct the deformity. This is the picture at the end of her treatment after correction of the deformity. So we stop the growth of this part, allowing uh, this part to grow, and when it grows, it push the leg outward and correct the deformity. And when she's fully corrected uh, like this, we took her back and removed the hardware. So the second thing that the orthopedic surgeon can do surgically is osteotomy. Osteotomy means cutting the bone and correcting the deformity. Uh, you can do the mm, cutting of the bone um, and correcting the deformity either acutely or you can apply an external fixator device and gradually obtain your correction. So this is a patient with uh, dysplasia. If you can see obviously here on his left side, he has genoverum, his uh, leg is pointing towards the midline. So an external fixator was applied, the osteotomy was done. If you see there is a cut of the bone here at the tip of the black arrow here, also there is an osteotomy of the fibula. And then we apply the device and gradually um, uh, correct the deformity. This is the picture of the device uh, clinic and then uh, gradually correct the deformity till you obtain uh, the uh, required correction.